Hey folks, this is the fourth and possibly the final video on our power or energy related series of videos for now. In this one, let's talk about India's power transmission infrastructure. Again, I'll use power or energy interchangeably because I mean the same thing when I say energy, that is power, that is electricity. By now, we have established how much total installed power capacity India commands. Of that, what percentage is controlled by renewable energy sources and clean energy sources? Almost half. The problem? Actual power generation from these renewable energy sources and clean energy sources is far below their nominal share in India's total installed power capacity. That is because of the base load power phenomenon. For more details on that, you can check out this video. And to increase actual power generation from clean energy sources, India is working on multiple fronts. In that context, we talked about nuclear power, solar power, hydropower, and so on. Now we'll look at power transmission. But before that, check out this fascinating graphic. It reinforces the role energy plays in nation building. This shows electricity or energy generation by some of the top economies in the world for the past 40 odd years. There's one country whose energy generation has skyrocketed in the last 40 years, and so has its economy. China, in 2024, generated over 10,000 terawatt hours of electricity, more than the United States, European Union, and India combined. Now, look at energy generation for just the last 10 years. India and China increased their power generation by over 50%. And in line with that, their GDPs or economies have grown at a similar pace. In case of Japan and EU, however, their electricity generation has actually declined and their economies appear to have stagnated. In fact, Japan's economy at one point, that is in 2012, was over $6 trillion. As of 2025, it is just above $4 trillion. The size of the economy has gone down, so has its electricity generation we begin to see the link between economic activity and energy. Okay, now let's talk about India's power transmission infrastructure. See how India's different power plants are spread all across its geography. They all work together to power the entire nation. And they all work together via interconnected transmission network. Different regions may have different energy needs at different times in any given day. So this transmission network needs to be able to move a large chunk of energy from one area of the country to another. This transmission network is also known as a grid. If this grid fails to move the energy needed, parts of the country can lose power. And it has happened in India before. At the end of July in 2012, India suffered the world's largest outage due to the northern and eastern grids collapsing. The grid couldn't handle the peak power demand at the time. This had plunged over 700 million Indians into darkness for over 13 hours. Imagine the consequences related to traffic management, electric train operations, critical life-saving surgeries, just to list a few. Since then, significant improvements were made to India's grid, which turned India's transmission network into the world's largest unified grid. Just look at these numbers between 2014 and 2024. India's peak power demand rose from 136 gigawatts to over 240 gigawatts, and the grid is now capable of moving 117 gigawatts of power across India's vast geography. Per capita electricity consumption has risen by over 45%. Average availability of electricity in rural areas jumped to almost 22 hours a day, and in urban areas, to almost 23 and a half hours a day. In early 2025, record peak demand of 250 gigawatts was met comfortably. Energy shortages were reduced at a national level to a mere 0.1%, down from 4.2%, which was the case in financial year 2014. And the year of the major blackout in 2012, a few preceding months before the blackout experienced power deficits of more than 8%. So all these improvements are the result of increased installed power capacity for sure, but also an upgradation of the grid. Here are some of the things India is now practicing as far as 
grid operations are concerned. An energy management system monitors the grid 24 by 7 at 2 minute intervals and 40 milliseconds scale. Advanced planning is done through computer simulations on worst case demand supply conditions and inter-region transfer limits. Week ahead forecasts are simulated based on the weather outlook to estimate power available from solar and wind, determine hydro power generation patterns because the rest of the demand then has to be met by coal and gas based plants or any other base load power plants. This is why India has not seen a massive power outage like the one from 2012 as of mid 2025. Hopefully, India can continue this positive trend. I hope you found this analysis interesting. I'll speak with you again next week. Until then, take care.